okay? So, c- celebrations, you know, they're, they're part of life. You know, we celebrate birthdays and anniversaries, we celebrate significant events, uh, we enjoy a good celebration, and as a church, we, we enjoy a, a good celebration, and as uh, uh, I reflect just over Pauline and myself, our time in this church, we've had lots of celebrations. We are a, a church who, uh, who like to party, uh, and uh, it's a good thing, because the Bible talks a lot about celebration. You know, God is a God who celebrates. And he wants us to celebrate. At the same time, he wants us to also celebrate him. And right back in Genesis chapter 21 and verse 8 in the New Living Translation, it says, When Isaac grew up and was about to be weaned, Abraham prepared a huge feast to celebrate the occasion. So even the child being weaned was a time of celebration. And no doubt they, they killed the fatted calf and, and had a, a great time. You know, the psalmist, and there are a lot of psalms, but I'm only going to read a, f- a few this morning. And the psalmist in Psalm 2, verse 11 says, Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Celebrate that God is sovereign. Celebrate that God is over us. And, and celebrate it with a little bit of trembling. That doesn't mean you're fearful and you're knocking your knees, but you celebrate it because of the awesomeness of God. Isaiah, in, verse, in chapter 30 and verse 29 says, And you will sing as on the night you celebrate a holy festival. Your hearts will rejoice as when people playing pipes go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the rock of Israel. Celebrate. And celebrate there with music. So uh, we're in good stead with uh, celebrating with music. Yeah, that's what the pipes are. They they weren't probably bagpipes, although there is a Middle Eastern version of a bagpipe. So, uh, so, and for anyone who wants a a Bible verse for smoking, no, he's not talking about your tobacco pipe. Okay. God sets out actually in the Bible situations where his people are to celebrate. And in Leviticus chapter 23, and we're not going to read the whole chapter, so you don't get worried there because it's, it's quite a long chapter. Uh, but he lists some of the holy days. And it says right at the beginning, The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, These are my appointed festivals, the appointed festivals of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. So these are the times of rejoicing. These are the times of festival. These are the times when you celebrate who I am as God and what I have done for you and what is happening in your lives. And so then um, the chapter goes through and lists them. There's the, the Sabbath, the Passover the festival of unleavened bread, the offering of the first fruits, the festival of weeks, the festival of trumpets, the day of atonement, and the festival of tabernacles. Now these were all times of celebration, and they weren't a a quick thing. Many of them went for, for days, because you were meant to take time to celebrate God. You know, the sad thing so often in our world today and in our society is that our celebrations are often quick. They're instant. Got to do it quickly. You know, whereas in the ancient East and in many cultures and, and some of the cultures that some of you come from, you, know, you take time. You take time. It's not, let's blow out the candle so we can eat the cake and go on and doing other things that are important. You know, they took time. And it took time to prepare. So for those of you who prepare at Christmas and sometimes get a bit huffy and puffy because you ought to do all this, it's part of the celebration. God wants us to be people who celebrate. And so he set out for his people of the, the old agreement. These are the times. Now, as... Uh, 
new covenant people. We don't have to abide by all of those. But it sets an example and a principle about celebrating who God is. And that's why today we are celebrating this new building. We're not celebrating our achievement. We're celebrating what God has done. And so we're going to spread it out at least over the day uh, so that it becomes a little bit more significant. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 14, it says, This is a day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance, a lasting thing. You know, there were occasions that you were to do, and then that became part of the teaching process. And like I said last week, you know, we need to build these things into our lives and into the lives of our children. They become celebrations. And when they say to you, why do we do this? And so often when our kids ask us, why do we do something? We go, oh, I don't know. And maybe it's time we found out why. Why do we put candles on the birthday cake? Why do we sing happy birthday? Why do we do these things? Why did somebody decide that uh, you know, 50 years of marriage is to be called a golden wedding? You know, why? And those who will live long will get to, to be a diamond wedding. And so you guys who are moving up that way, you better start saving because you'll want another diamond ring. You thought you've already bought the ring way back. Uh, so, uh, yeah. To teach the generations. They're part of celebrations. We need to do you know, I believe God has put it in us to celebrate. God has put it in us because that's who He is. He is a God who celebrates. And you know, because He is a God who celebrates, and because He is God, He has made sure that He let His needs be known. You need to know that. My dear wife. You know, she let the family know when she's coming up to significant birthdays because she wants a celebration. And she's not leaving it to the hope that they might do something or I might remember because there was an occasion when I forgot. So, uh, yeah, and, and God has done that here. Build it in so the generations know, so that they don't miss out. And as a church and as churches, that's why we have the celebrations. That's why we, we have the, the weekly Communion. That's why we have Easter and we have Christmas to celebrate who God is and what God has done and many of the other occasions. So a celebration is a time to, to have a party, is a time to, to remember God, but it's also a time to give thanks. And the Bible again is full of verses that tell us to give thanks, to give thanks to God for who he is. And you know, when I reflect on the names of God, on the names that show us his nature and his character, it's just natural to give thanks, to thank him for being the sovereign God, for being the God who has everything in his hands and under his control. Being the God who reaches out to us. You know, most other religions, we would have to reach out to God. But God actually reaches out to us. That's why Jesus came, so that we might have a clearer revelation and understanding of God. Jesus came because God was reaching out to us. God was wanting us to come back into a relationship with him. And he didn't put any obstacles in the way, but rather made the way through Jesus for us to come back into a relationship with him. And so he is worthy of our thanks. He is worthy of us saying, thank you, God. Thank you, God. That's why in our household we say grace, to say thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the, the food. You know, we're aware that you know, somebody has cooked it and put it on the plate, and so forth, but we're thankful for what we have, to give thanks. And many of the celebrations, that's why we're celebrating, to thank God. You know, when we celebrate our birthdays, it's not just about you. It's about thanking God for being with you and keeping you over those years so you can celebrate your first birthday and your 
15th birthday and your 60th birthday and your 80th birthday and your 90th birthday and your 110th birthday. And I don't know whether we go much further past that. Um, Methuselah has had a lot of birthdays, so he had a lot to celebrate and give thanks for. But for us to give thanks to God. And that's what we're doing today, both this morning and, and at 2 o'clock. We will be thanking God for who he is. You know, the psalmist says very clearly, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And we've sung that this morning. Uh, God is good. God is so good. He's worthy of our thanks because of his goodness toward us. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians says, Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know that little word at the beginning, always. Always giving thanks. Not when we feel like it or when we think about it, but always giving thanks for everything. And I'm not going to go into the everything, but you can work that out yourself. And then in Colossians 3.17, he says, And whatever you do, Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do, give thanks. And then in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ. And I know for some of us, you know, that's a hard one, to be thankful in all circumstances. But it's a matter of not always just looking at your circumstance, but within that circumstance, be thankful that God is with you in that circumstance. He is aware of what you are going through. He is aware of what's going on in your life. He is there. And that's what you're thankful. Paul's not saying be thankful for the heartache and the hardship. He's not saying be thankful for the illness. But he's saying in that circumstance, remember, God is with you. And that's what you're thankful for. That's what you're giving thanks for. You're not thanking God for the cancer. You're not thanking God for, for the hardship. You're not thanking God for the wild teenager. You're thanking God that he's with you in that situation and that circumstance. That his love and his power and his grace and his goodness and his kindness and his generosity is with you in that circumstance. That's what Paul is talking about. The same as we looked at the other week when he says in Philippians, you know, to rejoice and to rejoice always. He's not saying you rejoice in the hard times or you rejoice in the sickness. But within that, remember who God is and look to him. Then down in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 28, it says, Therefore, you know, when the Bible says therefore, it actually means listen up. Okay, they're a bit more politer than what we are today, but that's what it means. It's listen up. You know, are you listening? Are you paying attention? Good. And he says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. Yeah. A kingdom that cannot be shaken. That's our foundation. As we talked about last week. That's our foundation. It's a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And we are part of that kingdom. We are built into that kingdom. And God is with us in that. And we're to be thankful. And so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. And you know, those last bit is, is open to interpretation. And I'll leave that with you as to how you understand what reverence and awe is. Some people think that, you know, it's being quiet, being quiet, having dim lights, sweet candles. It is. But it can also be when Auntie Vina's on the platform leading worship and is loud. Uh, because it's still reverent and it's still awesome. Uh, to worship God that way and give thanks. But he says, give thanks. It's all about giving thanks. We give thanks to God because he is good. We give thanks to God because he does good things for us. We give thanks to God 
because he has brought us into an eternal relationship with himself through the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we haven't had to make any sacrifices. I know sometimes we think we have, particularly when we're younger. Oh, I'm going to give up these things. I had a cousin who said to me way back when I was you know, in my 20s, oh, you know, you have to give up too much to become a Christian. I said, well, I haven't really given up anything, but I've gained a whole lot. But what she meant is I didn't smoke, I didn't drink, I didn't take drugs, I didn't sleep around, yeah. I didn't go to all-night parties. And you know, if I did do all that and I had to give it up for what I get in Christ, then I haven't really given up anything. But we've gained, we've gained so much more from God. And that's why we give thanks. We give thanks because God loves us with an everlasting love. He loves us even when we are not always loving towards him. He loves us even when we're being rebellious and difficult. He loves us through every situation and circumstance. He loves us when we doubt him. He loves us when we rant at him. He loves us. And that's why we give thanks. Because if we were to do the, some of those things with anybody else, they'd shake the dust off their feet and they'd walk out of our life and they'd leave us choking in their dust. But God doesn't. He stays with us. He stays with us. That's why we had to give thanks for what he has done but more importantly, for who he is. First Chronicles chapter 16, verses 8 and 9. And the New King James says, O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, sing to him, sing psalms to him, talk of all his wonderful works. You know, that's what celebration is about, telling God about all his wonderful works. Telling people, as Ron said this morning, for those who are staying around for the, the, the open day, tell people, but whether it be today or, or through your days, tell people what God has done for you. Tell of his wonderful deeds. Tell them why you can celebrate in a, in a pandemic season, why you're not losing hope when lots of people are, because of the faithfulness of God, the goodness of God, and then sing to him. And Psalm 103, as I close, with my whole heart, this is from the Passion Translation, with my whole life and with my innermost being, I bow in wonder and love before you, the holy God. Yahweh, you are my sole celebration, how could I ever forget the miracles of kindness you've done for me? You kissed my heart with forgiveness in spite of all I've done. You've healed me inside and out from every disease. That's just a beautiful interpretation of Psalm 103, first three verses. He's the reason for our celebration. And I love that last part. You kissed my heart with forgiveness in spite of all I've done. If there wasn't any other reason to celebrate God, that is the reason alone. In spite of all that we've done, he still loves us so much that he sent his one and only son to die on the cross so that those who believe might be saved. So that we might be restored back into a rightful relationship with him. And so today, with thankful hearts, let's celebrate what God has done for us. And for what God will continue to do for us as we trust him. So let your life be a celebration. Let your life be a life of thankfulness. There are enough people telling you what's wrong. 
it's time the church stood up and started to say what was right. In this climate where there is doom and gloom, it's time for us to stand up and say, God is still on the throne. God is still in control. God still loves us. And we're going to celebrate that fact. Not just till Jesus comes, but we're going to start celebrating now because that's what we're going to do for eternity. So let's celebrate God. Have a blessed day.